NFLGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Sitting next to Rafael Fernandez, and he's bringing you his top 32 tight ends for the fantasy football season 2011. So let's just start with the list number one, and I'm guessing that somewhere in this top 32, you better have Pete Jackson of the Green Bay Packers and Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> I'm tired of teaching these people about these old football players. People need to do their homework. <laughs> And number one, I have Antonio Gates of the San Diego Chargers. And uh, he will, this is a guy that will continue to be what he is. And that's one of the top receivers slash tight ends that there is in the league. He will get his touch. He's going to get his catches. And Phillip Rivers has not shot a throw to him. He is a touchdown threat every time that they snap the ball. So Antonio Gates, number one. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Gates, man. Who do you have at number two? Number two, I have Dallas Clark, a guy that, again, is just like Gates, a safe pick at tight end. These, these two guys are safer picks than some wide receivers, you guys mm-hmm. So, I mean, these are guys that if you take them, you know they're going to get their numbers. So, uh, that's why I have Dallas Clark. Really Dallas Clark is a guy that keeps defensive coordinators up at night, not because he catches everything thrown his way, because he has an ugly number. And you can't let someone wearing number 44 beat you <laughs> at the tight end position. This is tough. Number three, you're on your list, who you have? At number three, I have Jermichael Finley. He's a, this is a guy that was injured last season, but before he got injured, he was one of, one of Aaron Rodgers' favorite targets. He's a physical threat. I mean, he's a monster to cover. I mean, he's a nightmare. And uh, he's going to continue to be that, and Aaron Rodgers will find him because he's going to get it. And he's one of those guys that you could flank out at wide receiver and really cause a huge mis- mismatch. Number four. At number four, I have Jimmy Graham of the New Orleans Saints. And if you look at his numbers last season, they improved near the end of the season more and more. As Drew Brees seems to like throwing it to him. So I think he's going to continue to throw it to him. And uh, he's going to have a pretty good season. Uh, and he's going to be probably the sleeper tight end this season. Yeah, one of those tight ends that, you know, is huge, former basketball player. So you have to love the mismatch that you have in the red zone. And he has sneaky enough athleticism to where he can get deep down the middle of the field. Who rounds off the top five? At number five, I have Jason Lynn of the Dallas Cowboys. And again, this is a, a gentleman who's going to benefit from the fact that his, his uh, quarterback is coming back from injury. And, you know, before he got hurt, uh, Tony Romo, that is, he loves to throw the win. This is boy. So he's going to continue throwing it to him and willing to put up good numbers in front Whitney has to be the slowest tight end in the league, but he always he finds a way to get yards after the catch. Great player, though, and Jason with number six. At number six, I have Vernon Davis of the 49ers. And I would have this guy higher, but the fact that Michael Crabtree got hurt, and, you know, the only other receiver they have really that's a threat is Braylon Medwood now. Um, I think Vernon Davis is a guy that will benefit more when Crabtree comes back. And he's a guy that is a great threat. I mean, he's a, he's a good you know, safety cushion for Alex Smith, or whoever's going to be the quarterback for the 49 One guy that has consistently gotten better each and every year. I like his progression that Vernon Davis has made. Number seven. At number seven, I have Owen Daniels of the Houston Texans. And he's, he's a guy that you know, doesn't put up the great numbers that the top guys put up, but he puts up consistent numbers. Decent, and he puts up decent numbers in there because the thing about tight end is a lot of these guys they, they, they use them for blocking. Mm-hmm. And they, you may have a guy that may have a game that, gets, that has a great game and then doesn't show up the next week. That's holding down. These guys, and you have to pay attention to the matchup before you start. He has to shake the injury bug, otherwise, he's a very good tight this end. Very good tight end. Number eight. At number eight, I have Tony Gonzalez, the Atlanta Falcons, and I think he's, he reserve, he hasn't, he's going to have a resurgence. He's not going to have the great season he used to have in the past, but he's going to have a better one than last season due to the fact that now, you know, they're going to throw the ball more to uh, the receivers that are going to be open to in Julio Jones and in uh, Roddy White. So that's going to leave uh, Gonzalez open in the middle. So he's going to get a lot of catches and put up pretty good numbers. In there. Future Hall of Famer right there. Who's next on the list? Number nine, I have Zach Miller of the Seattle Seahawks. And this is a guy that's going to be probably the favorite target of Tavares Jackson. He's going to be a big part of the throw to And I think he's going to throw to him more than any other receiver on the team. So I think Zach Miller might be, I don't want to say a sleeper, but uh, he's a guy that will put a decent number for him. Yeah, people on the West Coast know about Miller, but if they don't know about him now, they will once he gets on the field for Seattle. He's a phenomenal tight end target. Who rounds out the top 10? At number 10, I have Tony Moyaki of the Kansas City Chiefs. And here's a guy that's going to benefit from the fact that the Chiefs now have pretty good receivers to throw to other than doing both. I mean, they have Breston now, they got McCluster out of the backfield, so Moyaki's going to be open. And they draft the ball, and that's right. 
So I think Moyaki's going to benefit. I mean, he had pretty good numbers last season, too. Mm -hmm. But I think he's going to benefit from the, those additions and uh, be a guy that's open in the middle. Of you better hope Matt Castle doesn't look at him before the plate because nine times out of ten, whoever Matt Castle looks at before the plate is getting the football. So if he doesn't get looked at by Castle, he should have a huge year. He's very good tight end. Mm -hmm. Number 11. At number 11, I have Dustin Keller of the Jets. And uh, I have him this high. Every year, he seems to be the guy that everyone wants to pick and ends up being a disappointment. I think this is the year he finally shakes that and becomes a good tight end in this league. I mean, he's going to be open. I mean, I mean, you look at the fact that the Jets now have flexible burst and some Tony Mahomes that are going to demand coverage. Keller's going to be open. I mean, he's a guy that you could line up at wide receiver as well. You could play the slot for him. He's going to get his catches from contempt this season. If they allow Sanchez, they allow Sanchez to, to throw the game. football. <laughs> Next on the list. Next on my list, I have Kellen Winslow from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's in the system where they like to spread the ball out, but he's a guy that will definitely uh, get his catches in the middle. He's not shy about being in the middle and getting hit. He's, uh, he's a good player, and he's gonna get his catches. Very solid pro all around, guy that shows up week in, week out. Has a bit of an injury problem, but again, true warrior guy that shaking, you know, it, it really steps up you know, each and every week, and a guy that really comes to play. I like the way he plays the game with a passion. He's next on the list. Next on my list, I have Jermaine Gresham with the Cincinnati Bengals. And here's a guy that he may end up playing for a team that's pretty bad, but that's going to actually help your fantasy team due to the fact that they're going to probably have Andy Dalton playing quarterback, which he's a rookie. So what's he going to do if he has trouble? He's going to bump it down his uh, tight end. So Gresham is going to benefit from a lot of catches in that, in that aspect. Uh, I think the Bengals are going to take a step back in general, but that'll help anyone that has Gresham on the team. He had a sneaky, solid rookie season. Very good uh, player and look for him to take the next step this season in year two. Next on your list. Next on my list, I have Aaron Hernandez of the New England Patriots. And he, with him, the thing about it is there's a, a another tight end on his team in Rob Gronkowski that's just as good, if not better than him. But the thing about Hernandez is he seems to be the more athletic of the team. So he, he's the one that's probably going to get the more playing time. And Brady will look for him and find him because you know, they have Ocho Cinco, they have West Walker, you know, they have to respect those receivers. So I think Aaron Hernandez will get you know, a decent amount of capital. He's a good second tight end for you to have on your team. Yeah, it's tough when you have another tight end that's just as good right. opposite of you don't know who's going to get the football. So it's a hit or miss pick right there. Who's uh, next on your list? At 15, I have Asante Shanko, and this may surprise some people because he, pretty had, he had a pretty disappointing season. Right? Mm -hmm. But I think he bounces back due to the fact that now that they have Donovan McNabb, and if you look at the receivers there in Minnesota, there's really no one that scares you. And one thing I'm on with Matt, if you know, if you remember his days in the, uh, with the Eagles, let's not, let's forget that he played for the Redskins. Because that was just let's just give that a watch. I'm going to give McNabb the benefit of the doubt. I think he's going to be the way he was with the Eagles. And what I mean by that is he's, he was a guy that looked for the tight end a lot. So I think Shanko is going to be a guy that benefits from that and has a position. Oh yeah, you think of Chad Lewis, you think of you know Brent Selleck. He made the tight end position there. At uh, in Philadelphia, so who rounds up the top half of you know your, your 32? I have Mercedes Lewis of the, of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I have him here because I think just like in Cincinnati, this is a team that may start a, a rookie quarterback. And rookie quarterbacks, as good as they are, will you know get a little shaken when they have the pass rush coming out. And what's going to happen is he's going to check down a lot to the tight end. This is a big tight end to throw to. Right. Physical, and he's going to be a big target for him in the red zone for another of his chances. I agree. And so that's your top 16 very good list right there. So let's take a look at who you have for the remaining half of the league, 17 through 32. For fantasy football previews, visit footballgameplan.com slash fantasy or visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash football game plan. And listen to the football game plan radio show, which airs Saturdays, 11 a.m. Eastern time at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan.